Hi, my name is Jeanette with Me Time, and I'm here with you today to do the barn quilt trivet tutorial. We are going to first stitch all of the applique pieces and quilt it, and then we're gonna have a part where we talk about the binding in the hoop. This project is so fun and so different. We found a way that you can actually attach the binding in your embroidery hoop, and then you'll hand sew the back on to finish it off. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. I have my light mesh cutaway stabilizer, and we are going to make the largest size. So this um, barn quilt trivet is made in three sizes, and you have fabric in your Bella box enough to make the largest size. If your hoop isn't the largest size, that's fine. You can just cut down your fabric to fit whatever size you wanna make. Um, but today we're gonna make the largest size. So I'm just hooping my stabilizer to get that prepared. I have a few um, pieces of fusible backing that we're gonna iron onto three pieces of the fabric as shown in the instructions. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So we add fusible backing uh, for a couple of different purposes. The first purpose you would add fusible backing is to just give your fabric a little more structure. Uh, if you're gonna be adding a lot of stitches, so for like the background fabric, um, it's especially helpful to add it to that, just to help support more stitches. And then one of the other reasons we would add fusible backing is to help prevent shadowing. So if you're putting a light fabric on a darker fabric, then the fusible backing will help so that you don't see that darker fabric poking behind. And you can see from this image, I cut my fusible backing just a little bit smaller than my fabric piece. That way I'm not getting any of the fusible on my cutting mat, on my pressing mat or onto my iron. So one thing to note is in the instructions, part of the prep that you do is you prep the binding piece. We're actually gonna save that till later so that we have all the binding steps all together. So we're gonna just skip ahead and go ahead and go straight to the embroidery. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch the first step, which is the insulated batting placement line. Okay, so we've stitched the placement line and we're going to go ahead and place the insulated batting shiny side up, completely covering that placement line. We're just gonna make sure that it's centered over here. And we're gonna go ahead and take this in place. All right, we'll do and take this back to the embroidery machine and we're gonna go ahead and stitch the tack down line. We've finished stitching the batting tack down line. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the tape and then we're gonna trim the excess batting close to the stitch line. Okay, next we're gonna take the hoop back to the machine and we're gonna stitch the background fabric placement line. Okay, so we have stitched the background placement line. So we're just gonna place the background fabric completely covering that line. And of course, we're gonna use Kimberbell paper tape to keep it in place. Okay, so we're gonna take this back to the embroidery machine and we're gonna stitch the tack down line. We have stitched the tack down line for the background fabric. We're gonna stitch the stem detail. Next, we're going to stitch the placement line for the leaves. So we have stitched the placement line for the leaves and we're gonna go ahead and place the fabric completely covering that line. And we are going to just tape that in place. <laughs> ready to stitch the tack down line. Okay, we've stitched the tack down line and we're gonna go ahead and trim around every leaf. We're 
we're gonna go ahead after since we finished trimming we're gonna go ahead and place it in the machine and stitch the decorative outline to the leaves so you want to make sure that you have your right thread color on Okay, so we're gonna stitch the next stitch, which is the placement line for the flower centers. We are going to place the velveteen fabric um, and we have four different squares on every single placement line and we're going to cover them completely and it's really important that you tape them in place and we're going to tape all four sides in place so that as the machine embroidery the mo machine embroidery foot moves it won't catch the side of any of these so we're going to tape them in place So I have them all taped in place and we are ready to stitch the tack down line to the flower centers. We have stitched the tack down line. We're gonna go ahead and remove the tape and trim around every single flower center shape. So we finished trimming around all the flower centers. We're gonna go ahead and go to the embroidery machine and we'll stitch the decorative stitch around the flower centers. So we're going to stitch the placement line for the flowers. We're gonna place the flower petals fabric and just make sure this one piece of fabric covers all four of them. So we're just gonna make sure it's centered and tape it in place. Okay, we're ready to take it to the machine and stitch the tack down line. We uh, have just stitched the tack down line to the flower petals and we're gonna go ahead and trim around every single flower petal. Okay, we have trimmed around all of the flower petal fabric and we are ready to take it back to the embroidery machine and do the decorative outline. So we're stitching the flower circle placement line. We're placing the flower circle fabric and covering the placement line. And just adding a couple pieces of tape to prevent it from shifting in the hoop. And we're going to stitch the flower circle tack down line. Next, we are going to remove our tape and trim around the flower circle. Next, we are going to stitch the flower circle satin outline.
We've removed it from the machine. We're taking the hoop now. We're gonna put the back fabric on. So we need to turn to the back of the hoop. I'm taking our back fabric and I'm placing it so it completely covers the entire project. So when you're on the back of the hoop and you're taping, it's important that you tape the corners. So if I only tape the edges and I turn it upside down, this corner is gonna flap. So when you're on the back of the hoop, you always tape each corner down. And so I place, since I'm not on a flat surface, I just lightly place the tape on every corner. And then I turn the hoop to the right side. And from the top, I push down on that tape to help it more firmly adhere. Then we're ready to take this back to the embroidery machine and stitch the back tack down line. So we are going to stitch the quilting design. So we have our binding strip. It's two and a half inches wide and every different size trivet has a different length to cut your binding strip to. So for the eight inch one, this is 34 and a half inches long. Um, to start, you're gonna take your binding fabric and you'd prepare it just like you would for any other quilt. So you're gonna iron it in half lengthwise with wrong sides together. So you're going to do that down the entire length of the fabric. Okay. So after ironing down the entire length, we are going to join this binding strip so it's in a circle. So when you join binding strips together, you always want to stitch um, the, like a mitered corner together. Um, so that it doesn't put all of the bulk of the binding in one place. So I have this all right side up, taking the two pieces like this. And if you just flip this one over, it's right here. So we are gonna draw a line, a diagonal line where we're going to stitch on top of. And how um, I always remember where to draw the, which direction to draw the diagonal line is I remember I'm drawing a line between what I'm keeping and what I'm gonna get rid of. So I wanna keep these two long pieces and I'm gonna get rid of this part over here. So then I would take my ruler and place it again so that I have what I'm keeping and what I'm getting rid of. I just wanna make sure that I would be exactly from corner to corner. You're drawing a line and you can pin this in place. So you're taking this to your sewing machine and sewing exactly on that line. So you can see I've sewn exactly on that line. The next thing that we're going to do is trim a quarter inch away from the sewing line. Trimming that. And then we're going to press the seam open. So first I'll set the seam, I iron it on top. And then we're going to press the seam open. And then we're just gonna bend it back the way we had folded it and just pressing that. Okay, so I have my binding strip completely sewn together and I have the barn quilt trivet sewn with the background quilting, the quilting design all done. So we're gonna attach the binding in the hoop. And when I start, I'm actually gonna take the seam. Here's my seam where I sewed it together and I'm just gonna place it so that I know it's in the middle of this first side, the side that's closest to me so that, I'm gonna put the rest of it up here so that I know that the seam is gonna land in the middle of the side and not on one of the corners. That's always hard when your binding ends up on a corner. So we're just lining up there, just like that. And then we're gonna take this to the machine 
and stitch just the first part of this binding stitch. So this is stitching the very first step of the binding tactic. So we are ready to fold the corner. So in the instructions, you can see that we've actually rotated the hoop. So when I'm sewing on a sewing machine and I'm doing it, I always like to have the corner face like you'd be sewing it in a sewing machine. So you'll always see that we rotated the picture so that where you just stitched is in this top right hand corner. So just like you would normally put on binding, you're gonna fold this up. And the line that you wanna make sure is lined up is this sew line here. You wanna match the edge of the binding there and you're creating a fold right here. So you're gonna kind of finger press that fold and then you're gonna flip this down. You're leaving the fold just where you've placed it. And then the next alignment fold goes this way. You want this fold to align with the edge of your fabric there. And the machine is just gonna stitch this along this whole edge. So we're just gonna place a couple pieces of tape along this folded edge so it stays in place. And we just want the fabric edges to align just with that piece of tape. And now you're gonna have to stop yourself. I'm like thinking, oh, I should pull it and spread it way out. You don't want to do that. You wanna just let the fabric rest in its natural state. You don't wanna pull and tug and then tape it down really well. You just want it to just rest just like it is and then you're gonna tape it just to hold it just like it wants to lay there. Okay, we are ready to take this to the machine. Really careful that our foot doesn't catch the loop. So we are going to stitch the left binding tack down line. Okay, we've stitched the left binding stitch. We're gonna remove the tape. Like I said, in the instructions, it has this rotated, so the stitch you've just shown is always on this top right-hand corner. So we're, gonna just, we're going to just repeat the same process of folding our binding up so that it makes a straight line with this tack down line. I'm gonna finger press this and then we're pulling it straight down, keeping that folded. And then we're going to make sure this fold aligns with the raw edges of the fabric there. And then we're gonna just take this whole side and align it so it's lined up right on that line. And we're gonna tape it in a couple places to hold it in place. And we'll tape down that folded area. It stays in place. And again, we're not pulling or stretching the fabric. We're letting it just rest naturally and taping it in place. Okay, so we are ready to take it to the machine and do the top side binding stitch. Okay, we've just stitched the top binding stitch. This time we don't need to rotate our hoop because the stitch we just stitched is still in that top right hand corner. So we're going to remove the tape and do the same process again. We're folding the binding up so that this edge aligns with the stitched edge and we're making a fold and finger pressing it. And then we're folding it straight down so that this folded edge aligns with the raw edge there. And this time, having it line all the way up on that line. It's a little tricky because we've atta we're attached on this end. So we're just gonna take this end to hold it in place with the fold. And then we want 
want this just to lay flat all the way to the corner like that. So I'm going to take this out of the way down here. Take that out of the way and take this edge. So then we're going to return it to the machine and we're going to stitch the right side to tack down the binding. Okay, we would just stitch this right side tack down line. So we can go ahead and remove all of our tape. And then the final corner, it's just a little bit different. You're tucking that just like that. You're still doing the same fold down there, that miter fold, you just can't see it. It's tucked inside of there. And I'm trying to align your fold along this edge. You're taping this in place. I'm gonna take that so it stays down, and it's just gonna stitch this last stitch right here across my seam. I'm just gonna hold all this in place. We're ready to take it to the machine. We finished sewing the binding in the hoop and we're ready to take this out of the hoops. I'm going to remove my remaining paper tape. We can take this out of the hoop. And we are ready to trim it. So we're going to trim on this line that we lined our binding up to. So we're just going to take um, our rotary cutter and our binding, just trim around all, all the sides of the project. trimmed. Next, we're going to be doing a little bit of ironing. Let me pull my ironing here. The first thing, I just like to set all the seams. So we're just going to iron just like it is. Just going to set those stitches into the fabric. And then we're going to iron it away from the center of our trivet. So it wants to go towards the back. Perfect. And then we're going to take our trivet and just turn it to the back. So on the back, you can see it's quilted because we put our back on before we quilted it. When you fold over your binding, you're going to just make sure it just barely covers this, the tack down line here. So you're going to fold it just like that. You don't want to pull it super tight to the back. Have it be super tight on the front. You want to just have a little give in it. So you're going to just barely cover that line. And this is a great place to be able to use the clips, the binding clips. So you're gonna go ahead and clip your design. And then as you come to a corner, the first side folds flat, the next side folds toward you like this. So you're making a nice mitered corner. And you just put a clip right there. So you're gonna go around the whole, I'm just gonna do a couple of sides, my few binding clips. And let me show you one more corner though. So see, we have it. This side folded all the way flat. So you're making a little triangle. You're taking this edge and bringing it 
to cover and it makes that really nice 45 mitered corner look and you just put a clip on there. So then after you have it clipped all the way around or even part of the way and then you're gonna move your clips, you're gonna start the hand sewing. So you're going to need a needle and thread. Oh, this is harder to see. It's dark on dark because you want your thread to match your binding. So it's gonna match your binding. But I have I doubled my thread and tied a knot in both ends at the bottom. So I have a doubled thread. I like to just tuck my knot. So I start a stitch up here in the seam allowance and then I come out down just a little bit lower. So then it's going to tuck my knot and my thread out of sight. And you can see I'm coming out just where the binding reaches. So with your needle, your needle is going to travel inside of the fold of the binding. So you're going to poke in here and it's going to travel. You can see I've had it travel. That's like almost the width of my pinky now. It's not very far. And then you're going to take and go into just the back fabric two or three or four stitches, just threads deep, so that you catch just a little bit of that. And I do one of those and then I pull all the way through. And in that back fabric, you want to make sure you're only going through the back fabric and not any other fabric on the front. You don't want it to show on the front, so you can fill with your finger on the front. So a wider bite in the binding and then a tiny bite of the back. So then you'll just pull that all the way through tight and then you just repeat that same process again. You go just right into the binding and then take a tiny little scoop in the back and you want to go all the way around the back of your trivet to hand sew your binding in place. Now there is an alternate binding method listed um, in the instructions. You can press this really well and sometimes you can even use a little bit of some fabric glue to hold it in place and just make sure it's covering that line. If you use a stitch in the ditch foot on your sewing machine, you can actually from the front side, you'd be stitching in the ditch right here between the binding and the top and it will catch the back. But I would make sure you just have it clipped and attached really, really well. I actually like hand sewing binding on. It's always fun to just put on a show and just do some of your hand binding. I want to show you a corner. I should have started closer to the corner. But let's show you a corner. Okay, so right here next to the corner, I just want to make sure that my corner gets tacked down. So I'm going to just take a little tiny tack stitch and then just like I've been traveling along this edge, I'm going to travel inside the binding, the fold here, and then I'm going to take a bite into this binding on this side, just so that it stays nice and folded together. So I'll do that, do that going up the corner and then coming back down. So I'll make sure I'm traveling inside and then I'll take a bite of the back fabric right there on the back. And then just make sure my thread gets pulled all the way and then I'm ready to go on this next side and just keep on going until my binding, I've made it all the way around. That's how you'll hand sew on your binding. Just go until you're finished sewing around the entire thing mitering your corners as you go. Thanks for joining us for the Barn Quilt Trivet from the Fresh and Local Bella Box released in spring 2023. For more tutorials, follow us on our Facebook and YouTube pages. We will have more tutorials from the Bella Box for the bouquet gift wrap and the Living the Good Life screen. Now go enjoy some well-deserved me time.